When we first moved here, uh, we were making room for a garden and we had all these daffodils, these hundreds, hundreds Thousands. of them. Yeah. And Anna just stepped up and put uh, 50 of them on eBay and they sold like that. And we said, hey, why don't we be daffodil farmers? And we tried a few different things with the internet. We had a little uh, plant business going where we dig up Christmas ferns or cattails and send to people in Los Angeles. and. That was just probably barely above minimum wage when you did the math on it. The chicken water problem came about and that's when we put those two together and said, hey, maybe. And what we realized is that the reason that the daffodils and the native plants worked but didn't sell a lot is because they weren't niche products. With Mark's chicken water, since he came up with something that no one else was selling, it was a niche product and we were able to charge enough that we could make a living wage at it. I couldn't find anything out there that worked better than the traditional gravity working waterer. And I knew that the big factory guys couldn't deal with this problem, so I just kind of researched what they did. And basically they use these little uh, stainless steel nipples that drip the water and it allows the chicken to uh, drip it just a little bit at a time. So there's no chance of it ever getting fouled up and there's always enough of it. And then Mark went out and he started tapping the nipple and it took him maybe a minute to learn it. Yeah, it was like a chain reaction. Once one got it every once a day, I'm thirsty too. Which is yet another great reason to use it because every year a bunch of chicks will drown in their waters when they're day old. And this solves that problem too. One of the keys to the success of selling on the internet, you have to find something that no one else is doing. Most kids, it seems like, think that if they want a high paying job, they need to leave the area. And I think if there were some programs just teaching people how to leverage the internet and use it to reach the outside world, that that would really keep a lot of young people here. A lot of people, once they start a business like ours, which is pretty much entirely done through the internet, some of them will hire someone from India, or there are a lot of really cheap ways that you can get labor and you can get all your parts and so forth. And we decided that instead of doing that, we would stick with the local community. So we go to the local post office and we get a lot of our supplies at the local hardware store. And it's really helped us at least because we know more people in the community. We went to the local phone company, which is a co-op, and we asked them for a phone line so we could do dial-up. And it took them nine months to bring phone connection to our farm. But once they did that, we we're in really good shape because within, I'd say a year, is that right, honey? Yeah, it didn't take long at all. Within a year, we were able to convert from, from dial-up to high-speed internet because that was coming into the county and they didn't even have to redig up our lines. They put in the high-speed stuff to begin with. So we were able to upgrade to high-speed internet. DSL. For about the same cost per month, which makes it a lot easier to work on the internet. So I went away to college and when I came back I started saving for land. I bought that and then I realized I had no clue what to do with it. And that's when Mark came along. He showed up and he was pretty handy and he made things happen so we moved here. We realized that if you're doing organic gardening and we try to do a lot of no-till and permaculture techniques, which means you're really good to the land, but it's a lot of hands-on physical labor, that we were, again, getting maybe minimum wage for our work. But we figured out that by using the internet, we can bring products to an audience further away, say in California, where people have a lot more money and are able to pay more for a product. And that way, we can do the farming just for ourselves and have time our hobbies. It's, a, it's good to diversify, we've discovered. If you can do two or three or four or five different things, then even if one goes through a lull, you can boost the others up and you can have a steady income throughout the year. I think, first of all, it's really important to understand the difference between your wants and your needs. Because if you think that you need to have $50,000 a year 
the, starting on the first year, you're going to keep your full-time job and try to fit your new business into the little corners. And I don't know if you'll ever reach that point where you think that you can finally quit your job and do what you love to do. But on the other hand, if you realize that you don't mind living in a trailer, it's not a big deal. If you can live out in a beautiful place like this and have maybe over half the week just for yourself to do what you want to do, then it makes it a lot easier to start a business. I think I sat on the sidelines a while reading books and you know, look, seeing those infomercials about the guy who makes a fortune in classified ads. There's a ten of those out there and it took me the breaking away from a corporate job to finally start to change my way of thinking because I think if you work in a 40 hour a week position for so long you almost get programmed in a way that is difficult to break out of. It, it, and then after that it still took me several years because we there was a series of failures that just didn't work. But we learned from every one of those. Oh, so yeah, they weren't yeah. really failures. They didn't exactly work, but they were stepping stones on our way.